Welcome to Touch Technology Review. Today I've got a follow-up video on the brand new MacBook Pro 2017 edition. This model was actually released in the later stage of 2016, but now in March 2017, it's still the current model. So I'm going to go through it and talk about its aesthetics, its performance, and the things that I like and dislike about this particular laptop. In my initial unboxing and preliminary review video, I mentioned that I needed a good three or four weeks of using the laptop before I could fully decide whether it was going to be a suitable upgrade from my previous model. Keeping in mind that I was using the 2012 MacBook Pro for the past four or five years quite successfully until recent times when I started working with 4K video, I found that it just wasn't capable of handling that extra throughput. So that was my main reason for upgrading. So apart from the performance of the machine, let's just have a look at the aesthetics first of all. It's much lighter and thinner than the previous model. And also it's now available in this brand new space gray color. When you first look at space gray, it looks quite dark, almost, uh, almost black when it's out of the light. But as soon as you put it into the light, you'll see that it lights up and it kind of has a nice silver gray shimmer about it. And it's quite impressive to look at. As always, the opening and closing of the laptop is made very easy with the well-designed hinge. And you can do it with one finger and the full weight of the laptop will rest on your desktop. And this is something that a lot of manufacturers aren't able to reproduce, but Apple had this running for a long time. One of the first things that you'll notice on the exterior of the laptop is that the Apple logo no longer lights up. Instead, it's replaced by a silver mirror finish logo. Even though it doesn't light up, it still captures a light and has a very premium look about it as you would expect from an Apple product. The other thing you'll notice when you open the lid is that the MacBook Pro logo now appears on the base of the monitor, which is a nice addition. The previous model didn't have that. Obviously, the other things to note straight away is the increased size of the trackpad, the change of the keyboard, it's much flatter and it has a slightly different layout and configuration. It's sort of pushed further back into the machine and the new touch bar makes its appearance for the first time. So let me talk about some of those things one by one. The trackpad itself being larger, I haven't really noticed any significant advantage there. To be honest with you, I've accidentally touched it a few times when I didn't want to. It's a little bit more annoying than it is of any benefit at this stage. I don't know why they felt a need to increase the trackpad. I thought it was large enough on the previous model. But having said that, uh, if you do use some of those gestures that are available on the trackpad, it's probably gonna be of some advantage to you there. Somehow I feel that they just wanted to create a larger trackpad to somehow compete with the touch screen capability being offered by the likes of the Microsoft Surface. And they've also done that with the new touch bar by giving you some additional touch screen capability. And it's only limited to this very thin strip above the keyboard at this stage, not actually on your screen. The touch bar has the ability to change the music track that you're playing, press play and pause, adjust the volume, and adjust your display brightness and keyboard brightness and so on. There's been a lot of talk about the disappearance of the function keys, which normally appears in this position. And this actually is easy to get back by holding down the function key on the bottom left of the keyboard. You can bring back all your F keys from F1 to F12. So for the programmers out there, this is not going to be a major problem for you, but you will have to introduce an additional step of touching the physical function key to access your F1 to F12 keys. Now the touch bar does change depending on which application you're using. So for example, if you're using your email client, you'll get access to emojis and also preemptive uh, spell check. So there's a few additional features that come into play as you're opening up different programs. In terms of the professional applications such as Photoshop, Illustrator and Adobe, there are a few small features that you can access on the touch bar in Photoshop. You can add an image from the touch bar. 
you can access the layer properties and your brushes for example and you can also play around the opacity of layer so there's a few simple things you can do on the touch bar but nothing that i'm actually practically using at this stage one of the disappointing things for me was as a video editor there was no access to anything on the touch bar when i'm using adobe premiere i'm sure that's going to come out soon as a software update i know that final cut pro users and GarageBand and iMovie users are getting access to touch bar functionality so I'm sure Adobe is gonna update all their apps to have touch bar capability soon. One of the things that a video editor is going to love to be able to do on the touch bar is to scrub your video footage on the timeline just using that touch bar. I've done so using QuickTime Pro and it is really nice to do so. So I'm looking forward to the moment when that appears on Adobe Premiere. Now the keyboard itself is also lighter and thinner and I was concerned about this initially because I'm used to my previous keyboard but as always after a few days of typing you can quickly readapt to a new keyboard feel and I found this is very comfortable and easy to use. Now another thing that I didn't really talk about much in my last video was the improved speakers. They've been totally redesigned to provide as much as twice the dynamic range and up to 58% more volume with two and a half times louder bass for maximum boom. And they're connected directly to the system power, enabling up to three times more peak power. So they make MacBook Pro the perfect choice for mixing a track on the fly, editing video on location, or enjoying a movie on the go. One of the most controversial things about this laptop was the removal of all of the USB ports and the replacement of them with the Thunderbolt 3 port option only. Now this is a downside for people that have a lot of existing peripherals because you're going to have to equip yourself with a whole bunch of dongles to use them. But the upside is that the Thunderbolt 3 is a very forward thinking technology with a lot of advantages and it has up to 40 gigabits per second data transfer. So if you are able to get a USB-C Type 3 Thunderbolt 3 hard drive, you're going to get incredible throughput there on the hard drive. It also supports 5K video displays, and it can also charge your laptop from any port. In terms of the lightweight nature of the laptop, the look and the feel, the ergonomics, the premium finish, it's exactly what you're going to expect from a MacBook Pro, and it won't disappoint you at all. So let's go ahead and take a look at the performance of the new MacBook Pro. I'm gonna do so with a couple of real world tests running some 4K video footage on both machines, scrubbing them on the timeline, and then exporting out to a video file to see how long it takes. And also I'm going to use the Blackmagic software test to run some read-write tests because one of the biggest improvements in terms of spec on this new model was the read-write access speed on the SSD hard drive. So here I am on the older MacBook Pro 2012, editing some 4K footage and you'll notice that it's not scrubbing seamlessly on the timeline. It's not real time. It's very cumbersome and slow, hence the reason for my upgrade. Now on to the brand new 2017 MacBook Pro. You'll see that there is absolutely no issue with scrubbing 4K video on the timeline. I can go backwards and forwards, start, stop, all in real time, all very quickly and seamlessly. And the added advantage is when I export the 4K video, it's much faster, up to 30% faster than the previous model. Now onto the Blackmagic speed test. I wanna start this time with the brand new 2017 MacBook Pro, and the results are astonishing. The read-write speed on the hard drive really does live up to the expectation as advertised, and you're getting around 2000 megabits per second and that's an incredibly fast transfer rate of your data onto the SSD hard drive. Moving back to the 2012 MacBook Pro, the data transfer rate for both read and write is significantly slower at around the mid 400s reading and writing. So the brand new MacBook Pro really does demolish the previous models of MacBooks in terms of the hard drive capability. And the display has significantly been improved in this brand new model. It's 500 nits brightness. It has 25% more colors than sRGB. And it also has a 67% higher contrast ratio. And the proof is really evident when you do put them side by side. You can clearly see the brand new MacBook Pro display 
delivers an incredible advantage over the previous models. The one downside, however, is the poor battery life. Even though it's advertised to have up to 10 hours of battery life, I certainly haven't been able to get more than four or five hours before needing to recharge this laptop. And that's mostly because of the high-end type of applications that I'm using on a day-to-day -day basis. So that sums up my review of the brand new MacBook Pro 2017 edition. As I mentioned earlier, this is the top of the line model designed for the serious professional looking to run graphic applications, animation, video photography, and so on. Certainly if anyone has got the extra dollars and wants to upgrade to this type of machine, it's gonna be great for all round productivity uh, as well. Uh, but really it's designed for the pros and I can say from my use over the past month that it well and truly delivers on that score. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button and be sure to subscribe to the channel and you'll be notified of up and coming video releases. See you on the next one. Bye for now.